Hello social media world, uh, this is Michael Wolf, and I have my lovely friend Trisha as my camera woman and so uh, she's been spending time with me and she's a fabulous friend so um, you can't see her but you'll probably be, I'll be talking about her more in videos later on. Uh, so she's a good camera woman. Um, again, I'm Michael Wolf and I'm in Wolf Customs which is a not-for-profit hobby shop at this point. Um, did a video just a few minutes ago on like so just some random stuff I've been making here but so you know people are probably like what's going on with you Micah because I haven't been posting anything um, I've been my moods just kind of been all over the place I just can't wait for my mojo to come back because I come out here to the shop and I'll work for like two or three hours and I feel exhausted like I just feel like I'm made out of rubber like I'm just gonna like like if I'm sitting here like I'll just like ooze off this chair you know like and I'm a puddle of goo like on Ghostbusters or something on the floor um, so I don't know what's up with that and it's kind of been discouraging and then last week on Facebook uh, I posted I was gonna sell the Chevy and there's the Volkswagen right there uh, and then of course the Humvees in the background and um, but so you know selling the 57 Chevy would be like not a good thing for me because I don't need another uh, failure in my life um, I don't know I feel like if I don't finish the car then that's that could be something that I might feel like I'm a failure um, so anyway I was just being overly negative last week and I'm trying to nip that problem in the bud and have an attitude of gratitude there's so many things I am thankful for uh, like having a, this awesome shop to work in all of my tools and you know I uh, gotta give a shout out to Jimmy because you know this is he left his legacy to me like all these tools and stuff um, I wouldn't have all this stuff if it wasn't for him so I miss him and last year or last week was our 10 year anniversary if he would have lived that long so anyway that's just kind of like a rambling thing but this I'm actually now I'm going to talk about the 57 ship so uh, if I can get out of my chair, like, um, where's my thing at? <laughs> It'll go down. There we go. See now, look at that. It's so graceful. Just down. Okay. Like that. How many people have a barber chair on casters? I don't know. Um, so let's talk about the 57 Chevy. Um, you know, I started dreaming of this idea all the way back in 2009. So it's 2024. This idea has been cooking for 15 years. And I started on it in 2014. And I told Jimmy that I had an idea for a 57 Chevy Shorty. So that's shortening the car lengthways and putting it on a Corvette chassis. And um, which I had a those of you who know me and see my other videos, I had a 55 Chevy wagon that was a shorty and I love that car. But my concept for the 57 was to leave the roof line long. And so make it a shorty and in the process kind of make it look like it ha it's a fastback. Like, like if 57 Chevy made a fastback, what would it look like? So uh, with that being said, I, uh, Jimmy had a 93 Corvette and he said he won the car in a championship race um, and now Jimmy told stories so I know he had the car since it was new I don't know if he actually won it or maybe he bought it new I don't know um, and it doesn't really matter but uh, he loved me enough that he let me cut up his Corvette um, he had wrecked it it could have been fixed but um, he just he's like okay I pitched the idea and um, I twisted his arm and so I cut up his car. And so this was a four door. Like I said, I think I took about 20 inches out of it. Uh, I grafted the front, the, the door has been seamed right here. So this is the front door and the rear door, you know, put together. Um, now you can tell, like inside you see the, the teal floor pan in there. So, Everything in here 
the, the car is like literally bone stock C4 Corvette. Like I haven't changed the suspension. I haven't changed the engine or transmission. We drove the Corvette into the shop and I cut it up. And um, so now last week I had some people ask me, does it still run? Well, I haven't started it since 2018. And you know, this year of uh, engine, it's a 350, the LT1, and GM did what they call the OptiSpark, which that's the distributor that's like run off like right by the crank, the crank pulley. And I, apparently uh, it was a bad idea because uh, for one, they're, they're awful to change, they're expensive to change. And an LMSD, um, oh, I just forgot what I was even calling it. Um, anyway, the LMSD part is 850 bucks. And now you can buy cheaper ones for like $250 I don't know. I'm kind of OptiSpark. That's the word I was looking for. I'm kind of sh I'm shy about buying a $250 OptiSpark for this, but I'm pretty sure that's what it needs to get it running again. I had already uh, I have uh, Street and Performance, which was in Mena, Arkansas. Um, they cut down my wiring harness for me and reflashed the computer. Now, like when I got it running, I didn't I didn't hook everything up because the wiring has to come back out because I, I need to pull the engine transmission and get this firewall painted, make it look pretty. So I just did the bare minimum to, to make it run where I could move it around in the shop. And uh, so I think the OptiSpark's bad. Um, it could be, I mean, I'm sure the fuel injectors need at the very least cleaned, but it probably just needs a new set of injectors in it too. So, um, but other than that, it's like, you know, once I wire it for the, you know, take this out, paint it, put it back in, it's like it's ready to go. And Jimmy was, uh, he was fanatical about changing his oil. He ran AMS oil in all his cars on everything. I mean, like rear end grease, transmission fluid, engine oil. Um, and of course he raced midgets and he always ran AMS oil. He's a big believer in it. So this engine, I know that, okay, like the, the craze right now, everybody has LS engines. And like, <laughs> I remember in the nineties, like LT engines were like, that was the bomb, you know? And so, I mean, is it weird to say that I'm going old school by using an LT engine? Like, it's just, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's not the pri proper term for it. But um, anyway, for what I want to do, I just want to drive this car and the LT engine is going to work great. and. So as you can see, uh, I haven't started the body work on this fender. I need to redo these corners right here. And actually, I'm going to bring this down and barely radius this out. Instead of, instead of this roll here, it's going to come out just a little bit with the radius. So uh, I've got to redo these corners. Um, now the, the hood and the front bumper, are they're ready to paint. I finished my last primer I put on these. Uh, I had sanded it with 320 and blocked out. So actually, I could literally take these off today and uh, sand them and, and get them in paint. Uh, it has the first generation Corvette grill. I'm using stainless steel perforated material. Uh, I need to add another piece in the middle. I've got uh, some quarter inch perforated stainless that will go behind this grill. And um, so, this front bumper is actually the rear bumper for a 66 Mustang. And I, I cut it in half and I had to add, I don't know, maybe like nine inches right here. And then a 66 Mustang bumper is straight. So basically um, I put a, you know, I, an angle in it, like a crest to match the, the angle of the hood. And so then I had to bring back bring the uh the bumper was only this this wide and so i had to i had to build the back part of the bumper and then the um 57 chevy fenders like they only come down like right here so i had to build this on both sides and as you can see this fender is in first primer um and i added uh you know we like louvers we have a louver press right there so 
Uh, anyway, we put seven louvers in it instead of, you know, for you 57 Chevy people, they had three fake louvers. But we put seven real louvers. Why? I don't know. But just, it looked cool. Now, I need to um, finish out this edge here because I'm actually going to use a headlight in a bucket and set the headlight in the back here. And it, it'll, it'll mount off the uh, core support. And so, like this, it's going to be trimmed out right here. And, and then I need to clean this up right here and make this a little bit thicker. Um, so, I just think it'd kind of give it a neat look that the headlight will be kind of floating back there. Um, and I don't have the headlights yet, but they're not too expensive. I'll use the uh, United Pacific brand on that. And, okay, so like the roof is in third primer, so I probably need to block it maybe once or twice more and it'd be ready to paint. Both doors are in second primer. They're wavy still. So it's, they're going to take some more work. Um, and the uh, rear quarters are in third primer. So the, the, and they're pretty, they're, they're pretty good. So we we'll walk around here. Um, I, this is the 58 Chevy back glass. And to make this work, I actually, I tucked it down in the quarter panels and I haven't really figured out how I'm going to trim this out right here, but then I got to thinking, like, I may just sandblast the bottom part of the glass, like, like from here down, so it's etched real good, like, give it a frosted look, or, and then go in, or, like, I might do black on the back of it, all, all the way around, kind of like a late model, and then I think I'll just use urethane, and I, I think this will work without trim, so that's... That's one thing I got to play with a little bit more. Um, and if you come to the back, it's the back. I had these set up for 93 Cadillac tail lights, and I've got to trim this out a little bit better. It's so. I mean, my problem. I've got some ideas. Like I would almost want to change this up, and I'm, I'm trying to weigh out like. You know, should I, should I make some changes or should I just leave it alone? And, um, I don't know. I'll probably just trim this out and leave it alone. I thought about, I thought about kind of reworking these just a little bit and putting a tail light, a thin tail light across the, the middle, but I don't know. Really, and I need to like, I need to keep things in perspective because, okay, like the Volkswagen, I finished it out top notch. I mean, you guys know that it's been in four magazines. It's painted underneath the car just as nice as it's painted on top of the car. And the nicer you make them, the less you're going to drive one. And really at this point, okay, like my Humvee on the highway, I get like 12, 13 miles per gallon. So, uh, and in town, the way I drive it, I flog it all the time. And so I make it like five miles per gallon in town. Um, Anyway, so I kind of really just need to put this on the road and drive it because these 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 C4 Corvettes actually did pretty good on fuel. Uh, and speaking of fuel, um, the C4 Corvettes uh, they had their uh, their fill right right in here, and so I actually went with like a, a miniature Cobra style flip gas cap, and it's like it just drops right down in the tank. So. That part's done. I don't have to do anything to that. And now the package tray, as you can see in here, I don't know, there might be a glare and, and that light doesn't work so it's dark, but I put a package tray in here and uh, that was the year that I had, I had three surgeries in one year. That's 2018, 2019. And, I, and so I worked on it that summer and I was miserable because I was in a lot of pain. And I don't know why, but I didn't put any beads in that. And so that panel actually, it, it like tin cans, bad, old cans, um, boing, boing, boing. And Kicker is one of my sponsors. So if I put a stereo in this, that, I mean that whole package tray, that, that metal's just gonna just like, you know, make an awful noise. So I've gotta, I've gotta uh, redo this package tray. And I didn't prime it and so sitting, it's been sitting, like I said, since 2018. So it's all, it's got a lot of, healthy coat surface rust on it so I have to deal with that um, but 
really, like if I did this on the cheap, like the interior in the Corvette was in really good shape. And I could literally, this now the seats were, you know, this, the bolsters on the seats were tore up. But the seat covers, C4 Corvette seat covers are really reasonable. And I could actually put this car on the road pretty cheap. Use, I mean, the carpet was in excellent shape. I could put the factory carpet back in it and just put the seat covers on it. And for the most part, uh, that's done. I have, I have to make like a console piece. But now the dash is, is done. Um, I have this set up where it has a pod that comes out right here and it was just one single gauge. Um, so, and I'm, when I was at the PRI show in Indianapolis, I talked to uh, the uh, gauge company Ispro and they're coming out with this really cool gauge. And it was, it was still in like prototype, whatever at the show, but it's, it's one single gauge and it's digital and it does everything. Um, you just, you know, it's, I mean, it looks, it looks analog, but it's all computers. So it has all your gauges you ever want in one gauge. And that's, that's what I want to go with. And they talked to me, they were interested in providing a gauge, uh, for this car if they had it done. So anyway, um, that's kind of a walk around. That's where I'm at. Uh, my work has like come a long ways since I did this car. And so like on the tail lights, like I said, I'm kind of fighting the urge, like there's things that I would like to go back and redo, but I, I gotta keep this in perspective. And right now in my life, I need simple too. So I need to fight the urge to redo anything. I just need to keep it simple and, and uh, get it on the road. So I'm not gonna sell it. Like I said, at the beginning of the video, that would be an awful mistake. So uh, cheer me on. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I just, I don't have my mojo, but you know, I'm going to try to do a couple hours of work on this car every day this, this summer or like maybe not every day, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to put an earnest effort in and we'll see. But so guys, if you're still watching this video, I applaud you because I'm long winded and not very interesting sometimes. Um, but I mean, hopefully, you know, you enjoyed the video because it's a cool car. And on YouTube, this is actually the 57 Chevy only has one video and it's my highest ranked video. So you got that. And then, um, you know, maybe for you people that, you know, maybe me doing my video on my little, you know, tight shirt or shorts or something, maybe that adds to your viewing pleasure. I don't know, but I just, I want to thank you for watching my stuff. And I know I haven't been posting, like I said, but I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to get my poop 